to this quick little video on SAS. Let's go ahead and start SAS. This one actually covers how to do univariate and bivariate sample statistics. So we'll open up SAS as usual, maximize it. Editor, this is where we do all of our typing. First step in any, any time that you want to uh, analyze data, the first step is to get the data in to SAS. Because if SAS doesn't have the data in its memory, it's not going to be able to do any analysis. So we're going to import this data from the internet. It's going to be the stat grades data set. Remember keyword file name followed by the word data file, URL, and then in quotation marks the URL for the data. It is a CSV data set. Then we start the data step. Uh, data step. We're going to call the data set stat data. Follow it with in file input, and again remember these are the variables in the data file. Gender is a character variable, that's why there's a dollar sign after gender. College is also a character variable, categorical variable. We're going to create a new variable called GPA PCTLN, which is just the natural log of the GPA percent. Natural log of the GPA percent, GPA is run from 0 to 4, there we go and this will load in the data. So after running these, and remember we can either do it by the running person up here or F3 on the keyboard, let's do it with the running person. Okay, I see no errors in the log, nothing red up there, so we're good to go. Of course, one thing that we really do want to do is actually look at our data just to make sure that we got it in there correctly. So to do that we're going to do a proc print Proc again is for process. Print is the actual process we want to use here. It tells uh, SAS that we want to print something. So what are we going to print? We're going to print the data set stat data. And here's the data set stat data. Now it may be more helpful that instead of calling this the SAS system, we call it stat data. To do that, we're going to change the title. Title 1 is equal to data colon stat data. So let's run that. It's out of the proper order. Oh, there's no equal sign. Again, note we had that error up there. It said it's not valid. Reminded me that there should no be should not be an equal sign there. Now let's rerun the proc print. Notice up here on the results side, the first time we ran proc print, we got print, which is the proc name, the SAS system. The second time we ran it, after we did the title, we got print, then whatever the title was. Now the title again is up at the top, instead of the SAS system. Okay, let's start doing some univariate statistics. Here, the variable of uh, the uh, process you're going to use is proc univariate, which kind of makes sense because it's a univariate statistics that you're doing. And what are you going to do it on? You're going to do it on the data, and then run. You run this, and here's what you get. You're going to get univariate statistics for the ID variable, the grade, the GPA, the SAT math, the age, and the GPA percent LN. That's not all the variables. This is just all of the numeric variables. These are just the variables that have numbers associated with them. What are the univariate statistics that you're given? Well, for instance, for the GPA PCT LN variable, you're given the sample size, you're given the mean, you're given the standard deviation, the skewness, the kurtosis, the variance, the sum of all the observations, we're not weighting, so the sum weights and n are going to be the same. You're given the coefficient of variation. You're given the uncorrected sum of squares, which is just squaring all of the values and adding them up. You're given the corrected sum of squares, which is just squaring, all, uh, squaring the difference between the value and its mean, adding it all up. Actually, the corrected sum of squares is going to be equal to n times the variance. 
I'll let you figure out why. You got mean, median, mode also listed here. IQR, range, variance, standard deviation. Skip the test for location. We'll deal with that in a later chapter. We're given the quantiles. Q1, Q3, Q2, min, max. And we're given the 10 extreme observations, the five lowest and the five highest. A lot of information given here just from one simple line of code, or I guess two simple lines of code. And that do that for every single variable. But we don't have to. If all we care about is the GPA variable, then we could specify we just want it from the GPA variable. Or maybe we want the GPA variable and the SAT math variable. Notice there's no comma here. And notice this line starts with VAR. Again, that could be lowercase VAR or uppercase VAR. Since it's a SAS command, I like to use uppercase. Let's run that, and we just get univariate statistics for GPA and SAT math. OK, so that's for all of the numerical variables. What do we do for the categorical variables? It's a new process. It's a new proc. It's proc freq. Freq is for frequency. Data equals stat data. You have to specify the tables. When it was numeric variables or numeric data, we specified var, and it was optional. When it's categorical, we specify tables, and it's not optional. We must specify the tables. We want tables for gender and college. Here's the frequency tables for gender and for college. 45 in the sample were female, 55 were male. That's 45% and 55%. Since gender is not ordinal, the cumulative frequency and the cumulative percent don't make sense. College also is not ordinal, so the cumulatives also don't make sense. 13 business majors, 57 college from the College of Arts and Sciences, 11 from the College of Agricultural Science and Natural Resources, 9 from Education, 1 from Lasso, and 9 from Other. Again, the percents for each of those. So the difference is, for numeric data, you can specify the variables you want, but you don't have to. For categorical variables, you must specify the variables you want. So that's all of the univariate statistics. Now we can look at correlations, bivariate statistics. And again, a new proc for you to learn. This is going to be proc core. C-O-R-R -R stands for correlation. Specify the data. Let's see what we got. Tells us there's six variables that it can run correlations on. These are the six numeric variables. ID, grade, GPA, SAT, math, age, GPA, PCTLN. Gives us some simple statistics for each of those six. And then this table is the correlations. Technically, it's just the first or the top number that's the correlation. So the correlation between GPA and grade is 0.33558, top number. The correlation between age and SAT math is 0 0.08424. The correlation between GPA and GPA PCTLN is 0.99144. Those are the correlations between those variables. And remember that correlations are, uh, the order doesn't matter. So the correlation between GPA and grade, 33558, is the same as the correlation between grade and GPA, 33558. Uh, the correlation between grade and grade is going to be 1. So it's going to be 1's down the diagonal, guaranteed. And the upper part of the matrix is going to be the mirror of the bottom part, also guaranteed. The bottom numbers, we'll ignore that until we get to hypothesis testing, which will take place later. One last way of comparing two variables. Notice that these were comparing um, numeric or quantitative variables, we can do it 
uh, using, uh, we can do something similar, though not quite similar. Um, we can also do what's called cross-tabulation with the categorical variables. If we look up here, it's proc freak when we're dealing with categorical variables, tables, gender, and college. Just a space between the two meant that we want a table of gender and we want a table of college. If we do gender times college, then it's going to give us a cross-tabulation of gender by college. So up here, we got the number of males and number of females. Here, we got the number of business majors, number of College of Arts and Science people, etc. Doing it this way, we're going to get the number of males who are ed, males who are business, males who are College of Arts and Sciences, females who are business, females who are College of Arts and Sciences, etc. So we're able to look at some sort of correlation between these two variables. Now to test that correlation again, we're going to have to wait until later in the course. So there are in this sample, there are five female business majors, eight male business majors, three female ed majors, six male ed majors, five male others, eight female CASNERS, College of Agricultural Science and Natural Resources. So the whole numbers are going to be the frequency. The numbers right below it are going to be the percent of the entire data set. So female CAS people are 25% of the entire data set. And the frequency is 25. The data set is of size 100. So this is going to be 25 divided by 100 times 100%. The third is going to be the row percent, which means of all females, of all females, 55.56 were CAS, belonged to College of Arts and Sciences. Of all females, 8.89 belong to other. Of all females, 11.111 belong to business. Of all males, 10.91% uh, were education. So the third row, uh, third number is going to be the row percent. It's going to be of all, whatever the row variable is, that's the percent that belong to the column. Compare that with the fourth variable, or fourth number. This is the column percent. So this would be of all education, so given that the person's in education, of all the education, 66.67% were male. Of all College of Arts and Science, 43.86 were female. Of all business, 61.54 were male. So this is conditional probability. F the fourth number is going to be the column percent. Third will be the row percent. So given male, 14.55% were business as opposed to given business, 61.54% were male. We will cover conditional probability in chapter 2. You're going to see that it's very important here. And that's it. Univariate statistics. Let's go ahead and just call this quit. Just for the satisfaction, we're done. Felt good. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself.